Hi, my name's Nick Chatterton. I'm an Associate Lecturer at the Birkbeck College, University of London, and also a Senior Lecturer at the Open University and Qualification Lead for Chemistry. Today I'm going to talk to you about thermodynamics and thermochemistry. Um, so what is thermodynamics? Um, thermodynamics studies the heat, heat change during chemical reactions. And as you may well know, some reactions can either release heat, and that's most chemical reactions, and some can also absorb heat. The quantity that chemists use to discuss this heat change is the quantity of enthalpy, which is given the symbol H. And when we're looking at changes during chemical processes, we're talking about enthalpy changes, which is given the symbol delta H, where the delta refers to the change. So where does this energy change come from? Okay, where, what's this enthalpy or energy change come from? Well, essentially it comes from the chemical bonds being broken and made during the reaction. So that, as you will know, that reactants can be turned into products, and what we're doing during that process is m making some bonds and breaking some bonds, and this difference in the bond energies gives rise to the energy change that we see. Okay, so a guiding principle that can help us understand this is the first law of thermodynamics, and this says that energy can neither be created or destroyed but it can be converted from one form to another. So what does that mean? Essentially, the total energy at the start must be the same as the total energy at the end. Okay, so when we think about energy, we can break it into several parts. So the total energy at the, at, in total is the energy in the universe, and that can be subdivided into the energy in the system, which is the energy within the chemicals, within the bonds, and the energy within the surroundings. So we're just essentially exchanging energy between the system, within, which is within the bonds, and the surroundings. So sometimes energy can be released from the system to the surroundings. So the system goes down, the surroundings goes up. And, but the, the, the total amount in the universe is the same, but, so the system's gone down, the surroundings gone up. Or the other option is that the energy can, can be transmitted from the surroundings to the system. So the surroundings gone down and the system's gone up, but the total amount in the universe has stayed constant. So as mentioned earlier, most chemical reactions are ones where the system, the chemicals, release energy to the surroundings. These reactions are called exothermic, okay? And this is the situation where the system, as I say, is losing some energy. It's being transmitted to the surroundings. So the surroundings are getting warmer. The system is losing energy. For these reactions, delta H, the enthalpy change, is a negative number because delta H measures the en enthalpy or energy within the system. Okay, so a good example of this is respiration. Okay, so the, com the, the, the cellular combustion of glucose to release energy for cellular processes, that's a, re a reaction that gives out energy or enthalpy. And, those, and that energy is used to drive, drive, drive the cellular reactions um, within, within all living organisms. The other option is the endothermic uh, reaction where energy is essentially taken in from the, taken in from the surroundings to the system. So the system is increasing the amount of energy or enthalpy within it. So here, delta H is a positive value. And a good example of that is photosynthesis. As you may well know, this is where we use sunlight to turn CO2 and water into organic molecules such as glucose. So that energy input is, 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 is going into the chemicals, the system is gaining energy, the surroundings are losing energy and delta H for that process would be positive, okay? So the next thing we need to think about um, when we're doing this sort of, um, the stuff that you'll be studying in the, in, the, in the A level is what you're often doing is calculating enthalpy changes. So we talked generally so far about what they are, the fact that you can have exothermic and endothermic, but actually what you'll be most of the time studying and, and learning how to do is do these, do these enthalpy change calculations. And to do that, you need to, first of all, we, ne we need to standardize our enthalpy measurements. And the reason we need to do that is because enthalpy change depend on various quantities. And, and when we want to compare different enthalpy processes, we need things standardized so we can make these fair comparisons. So we need to, first of all, standardize the number of moles. So in our standard enthalpy change, we're always talking about one mole uh, of, 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 of a substance, either being created or being used. So it's always one mole. We also know uh, that enthalpy change depends upon both temperature and pressure, so we need to state what they are. And they're normally 298 Kelvin and one atmosphere pressure. And these, and this, and th this sort of this sort of set of um, temperatures, pressures, and moles are, are what we call standard conditions. 
So the two standard enthalpy changes that we're going to look at in, in most detail in this set of videos is the standard enthalpy of formation. And this is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance is formed from its elements under standard conditions. So this is the process of turning the elements into the thing, the substance. And you're forming one mole of the substance. The other enthalpy change that we're interested in is the enthalpy of combustion. And this is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance is completely burnt in excess of oxygen, again under standard conditions. So this is the situation where you have a mole of a substance reacting with oxygen to form the combustion products, which are normally things like CO2, H2O, and that sort of stuff. So stuff that's been when, when they're things like carbon and hydrogen are oxidized. So a key skill that you need to develop when understanding and working with enthalpy changes is to write ther so-called thermochemical equations. So these equations that, get you, that describe these standard enthalpy changes. So we're always talking about one mole of the substance we're, we're, uh, we're um, writing for. So we'll start by looking at um, developing how to write um, the, the enthalpies of formation. Okay, so a first example is the enthalpy of formation, let's say, of something simple like methane. So if you remember, this is where we combined the elements to form the substance. So methane has the formula CH4. And we need to put the state symbols in here because, as, as we mentioned earlier, the physical state can affect the enthalpy change. So CH4 is obviously made of carbon and four hydrogens, and it's a gas. But the elements that make up um, methane are carbon solid and hydrogen, and it's hydrogen in its standard state, which is H2, and that's a gas. But we also need to balance it. So we're combining carbon with hydrogen to form CH4, and to balance that, we obviously need two H2. So this would be an equation that re represents the standard enthalpy of formation of methane. So let's just do one more. Let's do glucose. So glucose is C6H12O6, and that's a solid. Okay, And that's made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So again, we write the elements on the reactant side. So carbon solid plus H2 gas plus O2 gas. And again, our final job is just to balance it. We've got six carbons in glucose, so we need 6C. We've got 12 hydrogens in glucose, so we need 6H2. And we've got six oxygens in glucose, so we need 3O2. So that's the second example of writing the enthalpy of uh, formation. So the other one we've got to write for is the enthalpy of combustion. So it's slightly different. So we'll do it again for the, the two we just talked about. We've got methane, but we're going to combust methane this time. So it's, we're going to put methane as a reactant, so CH4 gas. And, we, and because we're combusting it, we're reacting with oxygen gas. And the products of that reaction, well, carbon gets turned into CO2 gas. And water is formed where the hydrogen and the oxygen react together. So we get H2O formed. Again, our job is to balance it. We've got one carbon on the, on the left, one carbon on the right, so that's all balanced. We've got four hydrogens on the left and two on, on the right, so we need two H2O. Then we have to find the balancing figure of oxygen. We've got two oxygens in CO2, and then two times one, four, two oxygens in two lots of H2O. So there's four oxygens on the right-hand side, so we need two O2. One last one is to do glucose. Same idea, we're going to combust glucose. So again, glucose, as we have with methane, will be on the left-hand side. So it's glucose solid reacting with oxygen gas. Again, we'll form CO2 and H2O. And again, our job is to balance it. We've got six carbons in glucose. We need six CO2. We've got 12 hydrogens in glucose, so we need six H2O. And on the right-hand side, we've got now uh, 12 oxygens in six CO2 and another six in six H2O. So that's 18 oxygens in total on the right-hand side. We've already got six in glucose, so we need to make so we need to make our O2 figure not up to 18, but actually just up to 12. So we need another 6O2 to balance that.